Comments you would think aren't going to go down well in Pyongyang. We yet to hear any sort of official response from North Korea. Uh, but the great fear is that by making Kim Jong-un look weak, look like he begged on his hands and knees, this could derail the actual summit itself. We'll see. I spoke about this to uh, John Jordan in the United States. He is a uh, former naval intelligence officer and a Republican strategist. John Jordan, thank you very much for joining us uh, there from the United States. Rudy Giuliani's comments that Kim Jong-un was on his hands and knees begging for this meeting to go ahead. A couple of things. Do you think that's right and do you think it's wise to actually say that uh, at this point? Well, to answer your question, uh, first of all, it is right, it is accurate. North Korea is experiencing a serious economic crunch. They only got about two and a half to three billion dollars of four and a half foreign currency reserves left, and they're going through in about two hundred and fifty million dollars a month. They wouldn't be this accommodating if they weren't really in a squeeze. Moreover, uh, President Trump has delayed yet the imposition of yet another round of sanctions on the North Korean government, which could be really problematic. This is economically driven, not personality driven at all. Now, as for the wisdom of what Mr. Giuliani said, it was I think it was completely foolish. Uh, when you're dealing with a despotic regime, when they're coming to the table and you're asked, basically forcing them to do something which they do not want to do, and it's been something they've been working on for generations, you can't box them in like that. They still have to save face, if for no other reason, for their own domestic audience. Uh, otherwise, they risk serious political instability inside the North Korean military and as well as the, the North Korean bureaucracy. So this only makes it more difficult for Kim Jong-un to make a deal. Now, the proof in the pudding here is going to be the response over the next day or so from the North Korean government. If, in fact, they are bellicose in their response to Mr. Giuliani, as they were with Mr. Bolton a week or so ago, uh, you'll know that either they're either they were backed into a corner where they had to do that to satisfy domestic uh, political needs, or um, you know, they, they perhaps aren't in as big a bind as we all thought. But the proof is going to be in the next couple of days when we see how they respond to Mr Giuliani's comments. Well, indeed. Give us a bit of an insight into uh, the, the, the situation here in North Korea. I mean, if Kim Jong-un is made to look weak, uh, humiliated by the Trump administration with language like this, that he's on his hands and knees begging, how does that play out with the generals, with other senior figures in North Korea? I mean, what sort of position is Kim Jong-un really in? Is he all-powerful uh, or, you know, does he have to appease some of those around him? Well, a lot, little is known about the power structure and internal politics of the top echelons of the North Korean government. He is fairly powerful. He's executed relatives of his. He's just removed three generals. So he has a lot of power, but there's got that power has to have limits at some point. And uh, whether or not uh, Mr. Giuliani may be testing those limits uh, unnecessarily. What's instructive here is looking back towards the close of the Cold War with President Bush number one, when Germany wanted to reunite and formally end the Second World War. World War. Keep in mind, 20 million Russian citizens died in the repelling of the Nazi invasion. So actually granting Germany's wish to reunify and withdrawing Russian troops as the Soviet Union collapsed was very difficult for the Russian government at the time to, to accept. Now, President Bush made the very wise choice, and I think this is instructive here, when, when Germany reunited and the Soviet Union collapsed and the Warsaw Pact dissolved, American foreign policy was very mild in how it treated the Soviet Union. President Bush gave very specific instructions that no one was to dance on the grave of the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact, that we would allow them to keep their dignity intact if we were going to deal with them effectively in managing uh, Eastern Europe in the post-Cold War reality. It's interesting, uh, and that's a, that's a terrific parallel, historic parallel to draw. Trump uh, today is quoted in some media as suggesting he wants to play golf with Kim Jong-un uh, while they're there. There's apparently a terrific course uh, uh, nearby where the meeting's going to take place. And even uh, media reports that he'd like to have Kim Jong-un come over to Mar-a-Lago and play golf uh, at his own course there. Are those sorts of messages, uh, do you think, trying to smooth things out once again, show uh, a friendliness, a warmth towards the North Korean leader? 
Well, what he's doing, what they're trying to do to disarm North Korea, because that's the Western goal here, and that's something North Korea does, has not wanted to do ever. They worked, you know, for three generations on this project, so it's a difficult thing to get them to accept. But to do so, you have to almost allow them to save face to some degree, in the eye, if for no other reason, so that that regime won't be toppled and we won't revert, revert, revert to the bad old days with the North Korean government. So. President Trump is, I think, wisely trying to bring down the emotional temperature with regard to Kim Jong-un and allow him at least a PR victory domestically. And that's very smart. I think Mr. Giuliani just kind of shot from the hip, and I'm sure that uh, he's, being, he's being remonstrated right now by the White House. Now, in uh, recent days, of course, a lot of questions about what realistically is going to be achieved. And, and in recent days, some suggestions that Trump may see this as a, as a meet and greet, the first stage in uh, in a longer process is that do you think the most likely outcome here that this won't really produce a great deal of substance this meeting next week I don't think so. I think that there will be more substance than people realize. And you have to look at where the meetings are happening. There's the meetings in Washington. There's also, it's not been publicized greatly, but significant meetings, uh, lengthy meetings going on at the demilitarized zone in Panmunjom between American officials and North Korean officials, as well as contacts with the North Koreans in, in Singapore. So this has all been going on in parallel. And what's been happening here, I, th I think, and I think we're going to see proven out in the next week, is that what's going to be agreed to is a framework. And I think there are tentative agreements agreements on a number of thorny issues. Still lots to be resolved, and this is going to be a process. But I think what you're going to see is the unveiling of a framework. Um, otherwise, it does President Trump no good to just to do a meet and greet. I think that would be roundly and loudly criticized in the United States and worldwide for him to do that. But I think you're going to see the unveiling of a, of a framework of a, of a, the, such that both sides can work towards an agreement. And, and, and that sort of framework uh, could include, what, um, a, a timeline for disarmament, uh, and on the US side, a timeline for unwinding some of the economic sanctions? Correct. There will be steps towards uh, denuclearization, again, not just with regard to the development of fissile material, but also the delivery systems. There will probably almost certainly be the co a continuation of the halt on uh, North Korean missile test launches and then further um, developing those systems. So that will be stopped. Um, they're going to see a slow winding down of a lot of the sites for, again, not only the, the testing, underground testing, but the development of the materials and working towards the miniaturization of a warhead. That's going to be a process because that has to be verified. At the same time, in tandem, as each of these benchmarks are reached, you're going to see a relaxation of various, of various sanctions. Well, uh, we will see soon enough. Uh, really interesting to talk to you, John Jordan. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure.